Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, welcome you all to Muhammad Qasim's live channel. Uh, today's discussion is about Muhammad Qasim's dreams and the message uh, that it has for the scholars, for the Muslim Ummah uh, and the uh, Muslim leaders in general. Uh, and we will be discussing these uh, dreams about of Muhammad Qasim uh, from the context of the evidence in Quran and Hadith. Now, many times I have come across people uh, who have commented, who have shown concern that they uh, should not believe in the dreams of Muhammad Qasim and that the Quran and Sunnah is enough for them. Uh, well, I would like to point out that there is clear evidence in the Quran and Sunnah uh, about the importance of dreams and how dreams have shaped history in the past, in the present, and they will continue to do so in the future as well. Uh, so we begin first with our discussion uh, about Muhammad Qasim's uh, dreams. We will first look at the historical uh, aspect of the dreams and how they have shaped history. Um, then we will discuss about the uh, evidence in the Quran and the Hadiths about the importance of dreams. Uh, and then we will look at what clear messages exist in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Uh, the messages that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, for the Muslim ummah. Um, well, first of all, we all have dreams. Some of us see nightmares. Um, others may see blessed dreams about themselves, our, our lives, our family members. Uh, but rarely do we uh, see dreams about uh, our community. Uh, about our society or about our nation uh, or entire civilization. Uh, yet we know about individuals from our history who have seen dreams that have changed the entire context of history, uh, entire context of civilizations and uh, generations in the past. So it is established in history uh, <clears throat> that dreams have played a very critical role. Uh, in delivering divine messages to the people. Um, and these divine messages have not always come to prophets, uh, but they have come to normal people, um, and they have also come to the worst of people uh, in history. Uh, so we will begin first with uh, our um, analysis of dreams uh, that have come in the past to the oppressors or the tyrants. Uh, of the history. And we look at two particularly important examples. Um, these examples uh, are of Namrud and Farah. Now, Namrud uh, was a king during the time of Hazrat Ibrahim, salam, uh, and he had a particular dream or a vision where he was shown that uh, a new star is born, and uh, the interpretation of that was that a new a person will come or a new boy will be born who will uh, dethrone him or take away his kingdom from him. Uh, similarly, Fir'aun from the time of Musa alayhi salam, uh, he also had a dream where he saw that the uh, fire that came from Bet al uh, in Jerusalem, uh, it destroyed everything except for the Bani Israel of that time. Um, what we learn from these uh, examples is that the two most well-known tyrannical leaders of the past, their dreams depicted an end to their kingdom, uh, a reign that they, uh, they claimed to superiority was ending. Uh, and these were the dreams which were divine inspirations uh, to them that led them or th that led these uh, oppressive leaders to take certain steps which created a cascade of events and changed humanity uh, for the future that was to come. Um, what we understand from this example is that the divine inspiration that uh, comes from Allah uh, doesn't always come to the people who are of uh, prophetic nature or uh, a wali of Allah. Uh, Allah has delivered divine messages even to the tyrants of the past. Then we look at the example of 
uh, dreams of pious uh, people, but not prophets. And the most prominent uh, dream that we have is of the uh, mother of Prophet Musa alayhi uh, salam. And in this, we've got uh, uh, the references from Surah al qasas uh, Ayah 7 and Ayah 71. Uh, and in this um, amazing, amazing wahi that comes to the mother of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, uh, she is being reassured that she has to put her child in a basket and throw him in the river and Allah will look after the baby. Now, uh, based on many understandings from what the uh, ulamas have interpreted, um, they have concluded that the wahi reference to the wahi in this scenario in these ayah is that to uh, a form of a dream that was shown to um, Prophet Musa Islam's mother. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to have a quick look to make sure that the audio is working and there's no issues. Okay, seems like that's good. So we'll continue. So uh, Musa Islam's mother uh, acted with extraordinary courage and faith in complying with the directions that she had received in this inspiration or in this dream. Um, a mother's love for her child is one of the greatest and most powerful feelings in the world. Uh, and it's unimaginable that a mother would put her child uh, in a basket and send him floating down a great river like Nile. Uh, you know, the technologies that existed back in those times, uh, you know, can't we can't foresee them. We can't seem to understand them as to what we have now. But uh, there was no way of rescuing this child once the child was in the river. So this shows that Musa al-Islam's mother had an extraordinary faith in her uh, sacred dream or her sacred inspiration that she got. And what was compelling in her dream uh, was the inspiration that was shown to her. Uh, Allah knows best in, in the regard of what was shown uh, and uh, in what form it was shown. Um, but Musa al-Islam's Musa mother was not a prophet. Uh, she was a pious person. Uh, but she and her dreams and the way that she acted upon her dreams, uh, they formed part of events that were uh, meant to bring Musa al-Islam uh, to the Bani Israel and change the future uh, of Egypt forever, change the history of Fir'aun and his people forever. And then similarly, we have the example of uh, the king of Egypt during the time of Hazrat Yusuf al -Islam, uh, or Prophet Joseph. Um, in this story, we, we know that the king saw seven cows and uh, fat cows and then the seven lean cows. Um, and then this was famously interpreted by Yusuf al -Islam, And then Yusuf al -Islam became the uh, chief or the financial chief for the king. Uh, and then the story sets in of how he was able to uh, deliver uh, the people of Bani Israel of, of that time. So, once again, in, in this example that we have, um, the king was not a prophet, eh, but he saw a divine inspiration or a divine dream. Uh, and had the king of Egypt not shared his dream with anyone or uh, not acted upon uh, the dreams, uh, the Egypt, or at that time, the people of Egypt themselves would have faced a terrible famine and a horrible disaster. So it was truly Allah's plan and divine intervention uh, in these historical contexts. Um, and similarly, we have dreams of many Sahaba of the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and other dreams of the prophets that uh, uh, we won't have time to discuss today. Uh, but they show the importance of dreams and how they have shaped the religious history uh, in our past. So what we can conclude from these examples is that when it comes to dreams, uh, dreams of blessed nature or uh, divine inspirations, um, these dreams are a way of communication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not necessary that these dreams come to a holy person or religious person 
Um, it is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides who Allah wants to show the stream to and Allah does not choose or ask for an approval from me or you uh, when it comes to making that decision. Uh, but nonetheless, these are some of the historical examples that we can look into which describe the importance of dreams, not just for uh, the prophets, but the dreams that have shown divine inspirations and events uh, for other people as well. Um, and they include both uh, oppressive leaders or tyrannical leaders, uh, as well as pious um, human beings. Now, in the body of Hadith literature, uh, which recounts many sayings and acts of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there have been sections assigned to dreams uh, or visions, and they normally endorse that the view that is held is that there's benefit derived from good dreams, uh, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself approved of the dreams and wished the Islamic community to take them seriously as a source of guidance. And we're going to have a look at some of these dreams, uh, particularly the dream that, uh, the hadith, sorry, that relates to the uh, Mubashirat during the end times. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly mentions here that when the time or end time draws near, Hardly any believer will see a false dream. Now, this is an important part. Hardly any believer will see a false dream. And the ones who see the truest dream will be the ones who are truest in speech. Uh, and the dream of the believer is one of the 46 parts of prophecy. Um, now, this is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the last prophet, who is the uh, last Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is mentioning to the Ummah that the dreams of a believer during the end times are going to be important. And these dreams are 46 parts of the prophecy. So he's emphasizing on the importance of dreams that will come during the end times. Um, and there, there are further hadiths about uh, dreams. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, another Sahih uh, hadith confirms that a good dream uh, of a righteous man is one of the 46 parts of prophetism. Um, and then there's another hadith that says uh, during the end times or after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nothing will be left of prophetism except al-mubashira. Uh, and when the sahabas asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what it meant by al-mubashira, he replied, true dreams that convey glad tidings. Uh, and then we also have a very significant um, hadith that has been narrated many times and used by uh, ulamas in explaining. Um, and this hadith says, whoever has seen me in a dream, then no doubt he has seen me, for shaitan cannot imitate my shape. And there are also other narrations similar to this hadith which say that whoever seen Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream has indeed seen the truth. Um, so in concluding, the perspective of hadith uh, is the Prophet, the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Khatimun Nabiyyin, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was emphasizing to the people, uh, to the Sahaba, of the time to the Muslims of the time, leaving a message for future generations that al mubashira or dreams of a true believer will hardly be false during the uh, closer to the end times, and they are part of prophetism that is going to continue um, in the future to come. <clears throat> now, there's also been discussions. Um, by uh, ulamas uh, who have commented about seeing visions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dreams. Uh, and it is not something new that we hear about today. Uh, it is something that has been uh, discussed throughout history. Uh, prominent uh, scholars, uh, for example, al baghawi uh, states in his book, Shara as sunnah uh, And he says that if one sees Allah in a dream looking at him, then this reflects uh, Allah's mercy. And if he sees Allah turning away from him, then it is a warning for one to shun the sins. 
and an Nawawi. Uh, similarly, he explains in the book of Imam Muslim, uh, explaining Al Qadhi Iyad, saying that the scholars have agreed that it is possible to see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in a dream, and that the dream would be a true dream. Um, Ibn Siri, who is uh, another notable uh, scholar. Uh, he is noted as one of the most pious among the second generation of Muslims. Um, he was highly respected in his lifetime as a transmitter of hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he states in his uh, renowned book on interpretation of dreams that if one sees Allah Most High in uh, talking secretly one with another person or the subject of the dream, then this means that. That person is closer to Allah. If one sees Allah is advising one and giving one nasiha, then this alludes to the fact that Allah is not completely happy with one's actions. A glad tiding from Allah is a sign of Allah's pleasure, and admonition from Allah is a sign of His wrath and anger. So, <clears throat> the points concerning visions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dreams or conversations with Allah or speaking with Allah. Uh, it's been well documented in the history and prominent scholars have talked about this. So this is not something that is newly discovered or newly known, but this is something that exists as true and it has happened uh, perhaps not just to the prophets, uh, but also to pious people uh, who have lived throughout the time. Now, there's another uh, well-known scholar uh, who has shared his uh, visions. Um, and he has he claims to have uh, also seen visions of Allah in dreams. Um, his uh, name is Sheikh Ibn Arabi, uh, and there are many narrations about what he has seen and his uh, experiences that you can find online. Now, having had this disclosure about uh, dreams, how they have changed history, how they have uh, been divine inspirations coming to uh, people that are not just prophets and then the importance of hadiths uh, or the importance of dreams that uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has left for us for us to understand and to uh, sort of remember when it comes to the end times um, we now look at why muhammad qasim's dreams are important and what is the message in muhammad qasim's dreams and how this relates back to the important messages that have been uh, in the past in other dreams. Um, as I've mentioned previously uh, in my lectures as well, that Muhammad Qasim's dreams are very unique. They are not just dreams about you and I, uh, the things that we see uh, in general, but his dreams are about the Muslim Ummah in wider nation. And Muhammad Qasim's dreams are about how Islam will rise again, how Pakistan will rise again. Um, he's also seen the construction of the Jal's palace in Palestine. Uh, he's also seen the events of Ghazwa Hind. Uh, he's also seen Malhamatul Kubra, which is the um, final war that happens uh, before Qiyamah. Uh, in Islamic eschatology, there's uh, a lot of discussions about this war. Uh, Muhammad Qasim says that this war is World War III uh, that will happen. Then Muhammad Qasim has also seen war uh, with the Jal in his dreams, the uh, arrival of Isa alayhi uh, salam and the Yajuj and Mavjuj and the day of Qiyamah. Now, these are just some broad topics that concern Muhammad Qasim's dreams, but uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen events that have already occurred uh, today uh, about other people um, that have come true exactly as he has seen them. Now, the visions uh, shown to Muhammad Qasim um, actually include details of events uh, that will happen um, that have, as we note, have been described in uh, other hadiths. Uh, Muhammad Qasim actually sees these visions as he's present uh, in those events as they are happening. Um, the visions and messages that have been delivered to Muhammad Qasim, uh, they have been delivered through Prophet Muhammad wasallam appearing in his dreams. Uh, and also in his dreams where he's had conversations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, Muhammad Qasim says that he has uh, seen dreams where he's seen Allah's presence over 500 times. Uh, and he's seen dreams in which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was present over 300 times. And Muhammad Qasim has been seeing these visions from uh, an age of about 12 or 13 years old. Um, this was a very long time ago. Now he's 45 years old. Uh, but he only started sharing these dreams when uh, he was instructed by Prophet Muhammad uh, in a dream in 2014. So not so long ago, he was instructed to share his dreams. And in that particular dream, uh, Muhammad Qasim says that um, he was told by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he has to share his dreams to save Islam and to save Muslim Ummah. Now, a lot of people have also uh, perhaps constructed a conspiracy about Muhammad Qasim that he uh, is a establishment of a political agenda, uh, which is not the case. Uh, Muhammad Qasim didn't hasn't shared his dreams now to become popular. If he, he really wanted to, he would have done that in his youth. He could have become a peer or a baba. Uh, he could have made a lot of money from from his uh, dreams, as you see, which is uh, in the subcontinent. There are many, many people who uh, have established empires uh, based on their uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Muhammad Qasim's intention was not that about sharing his dreams. Now, in fact, Muhammad Qasim maintains that his help and uh, his support is only from Allah. And he only ever seeks help from Allah. He doesn't ask anyone for uh, his help. When he started sharing his dreams, when people came to into contact with him, they wanted to help him with money um, and with uh, other uh, areas of support. But he did not want any of those things. Um, and uh, this is something that from a character of Muhammad Qasim, we find that he has been truthful about what he has seen and what he has narrated. Uh, he's been honest and he lays his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad Qasim says that Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have told him in his dreams to share his dreams with the public. So he just wants to be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing more. And now, uh, a little bit about Muhammad Qasim, uh, based on my personal experience, I found him to be a very humble, a very innocent human being. Uh, he's very shy, and uh, I, my personal experience of uh, having discussions with him, I found him to be one of the purest people uh, that I've come across um, throughout my lifetime so far. And uh, mind you, other people who have met Muhammad Qasim uh, have also had the same experience about him. Now, we're looking at Muhammad Qasim's dreams and a little bit more into the specific messages that Muhammad Qasim's dreams have for the Muslim Ummah, for the Muslim scholars, for the Muslim leaders. Um, and I have taken some parts of these dreams to illustrate uh, my message to you today. Um, I hope that this enlightens you uh, to have a look at Muhammad Qasim's dreams in more detail. Um, but we will look at how Muhammad Qasim describes uh, seeing the visions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what messages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. So Muhammad Qasim says that his visions about Allah, he sees Allah uh, more so often in his dreams and uh, he's never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his own eyes but he has felt that Allah is present on the arsh, arsh al-azim uh, and uh, he more often hears the voice from behind a veil. The voice would sometimes descend from the sky uh, or he would see an incredible light or a nur uh, sometimes that his magnificent voice comes from the nur. Now, as far as the Noor is concerned, Muhammad Qasim says that he doesn't want to say that the Noor is Allah, but he wants to say that rather the Noor is a creation of Allah 
um, or a version of, of the nu that Allah has created. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far beyond everything to be classified as nur. Allah is the creator of nur and Allah's uh, voice uh, that he finds is uh, unbelievable. Uh, in many times that I have had a discussion with him, uh, he says that the experience that he has in, in the dreams, he cannot describe it in his words. And Muhammad Qasim says that in 2007 uh, or since 2007, Allah and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, began to guide Muhammad Qasim spiritually and uh, he received many instructions about things he should do, things he should avoid. Um, before that, he uh, was not as much a practicing Muslim, uh, but since he had received these instructions and these advices, he has changed the way that he is um, and he's improved himself as a uh, human being as a muslim uh, most importantly muhammad qasim was shown that the different forms of shirk and how to avoid uh, these forms of shirk this has been illustrated to him as the most important aspect to improve his character to improve himself uh, and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad Qasim says that in 2015, Muhammad Qasim saw a dream uh, where Allah said to Muhammad Qasim that Qasim, as Quran is my word, and if Satan or jinn or all the creation, including humans combined together, they cannot create a single ayah. Similarly like that, the dreams which I have shown you, these dreams have been created by me, Allah. And if shaitan, jinn and humans combine together, even then they won't be able to create such a dream. And neither can shaitan show such a dream to anyone. These dreams are for, um, from Allah, Lord of all the words. Now, a very uh, profound and powerful dream of Muhammad Qasim that he's seen and this capsulates a very important message for the uh, Muslim Ummah particularly the scholars for them to understand uh, what importance there is that exists in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. And Muhammad Qasim goes on to say that in 2015 uh, Muhammad Qasim saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he saw him three times in the same night uh, and the message was the same in, in all those dreams. He saw that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was very worried and uh, he was walking uh, back and forth in, in that concern. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told Muhammad Qasim that Qasim convey this message to the whole Ummah. Uh, Qasim, whoever stands with you is just like a person standing with me and whoever supports you is just like a person supporting me and he will be with me on the day of judgment on another dream in 2015 muhammad qasim saw uh, that prophet muhammad وسلم, told him qasim convey this message of mine to my whole ummah that whoever supports you and stands with you is just like a person who is standing with me and is supporting me this is my Islam and since you are doing everything because Allah and I said so, the message that has to come through will be the important message for the Muslim Ummah. Now, once again, another powerful dream of Muhammad Qasim where he is seen Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his dream delivering these specific messages to you and to me to make us aware of the importance of Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Now we have tried to reach many <clears throat> ulamas and scholars across the world about Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Uh, many of these ulamas um, have a prominent stature. Um, a lot of them are from uh, local sanctuaries in different countries. Um, we have explained 
the concept of uh, the dreams that have been seen by Muhammad Qasim, uh, but most of these ulamas, they have failed to understand the urgency and the importance of the message of uh, Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Um, in fact, many haven't even considered to look through Muhammad Qasim's dreams, uh, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, the fact that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has appeared in Muhammad Qasim's dream and asked him to deliver the message uh, to to us, uh, I think this holds a very significant importance, at least for us to uh, investigate if we don't want to act upon Muhammad Qasim's dreams or the message of his dreams, but at least to investigate and understand about Muhammad Qasim's dreams. And as a duty to Islam, we are ought to uh, do this uh, for Muhammad Qasim's dreams, especially when these instructions have been presented in the Quran and the Hadith, uh, as we come to understand after reading the references that we have presented earlier. Now, even in the Quran, Allah has mentioned on numerous occasions about the importance of dreams and the importance of investigating news when it comes. Um, there's a, a surah in surah, sorry, there's an ayah in surah Yunus, ayah 64, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, For them are glad tidings in the life of the present world and in the hereafter. Uh, so when the Sahaba asked the question from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the meaning of glad tidings? And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded that those are the good dreams that a Muslim sees or are seen about him. Um, and in another ayah in Surah Rum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and among Allah's signs are the one that is your sleeping and your seeking of his bounty by night and day. Behold, there are sure signs in this for people who would listen. Um, and then there's uh, uh, an ayah that I found very interesting, uh, which I thought I would mention, having discussed character of Muhammad Qasim, uh, that Allah mentions in the Quran that obey those who ask of no wages of you uh, and who are rightly guided. Um, now that is upon us for us to judge and the only way that we will be able to judge is if we investigate things properly, we understand things properly. Um, also, uh, another ayah that uh, asks us to investigate, uh, um, this is Surah Hujurat, ayah 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, uh, in case an immoral person comes to you with a tiding, then ascertain the evidence for that you may afflict a person uh, or people in ignorance. Uh, and then you be may become remorseful for what you have performed. Now, on the uh, tafsir of this ayah, uh, there have been stories that uh, many ulamas have discussed, but the specific uh, knowledge or a specific message of this ayah is that when a message comes to you, whether it is good or, or bad in that sense, investigate it in case you may do something or you may choose to say something or you may choose to not take action about something and that particular thing that you did may not be correct and you would become remorseful or regretful over it. So we've seen that these uh, contexts, the uh, historical uh, aspect of the dreams and how they have shaped history, the importance of dreams that is mentioned in the Quran uh, is specifically backed up by the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about dreams that are related to the end times and the messages that we have seen in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Um, this really makes a case for uh, us Muslims, for us to be able to understand the message of these dreams. Um, now, especially uh, like I've mentioned in my previous uh, discussions, especially the, the fact that Muhammad Qasim's dreams have come true about Imran Khan, who's the uh, who was the ex uh, now the ex prime minister of Pakistan, but Muhammad Qasim saw very specific events about Muhammad Qasim's uh, sorry uh, Imran Khan's leadership from the beginning when he started to the end when he was ousted from his leadership. All of those dreams of Muhammad Qasim came true exactly as he saw them. 
And these dreams about Imran Khan coming true are an evidence um, for you and I. This is a, a uh, let's say, a, a conclusion for you and I to tick the box to say Muhammad Qasim's dreams are true and the way that they have arrived, they definitely have an important message for the Ummah. Especially the two uh, dreams that we have looked at of Muhammad Qasim where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered a specific message to the Muslim Ummah, you and me, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has delivered a specific message to you and me. So, the fact that Muhammad Qasim's dreams uh, are coming true, um, and not just about Imran Khan, but his dreams about the wider Muslim Ummah, the situation in Palestine, uh, last year and uh, the situation that people of Kashmir experienced. Um, many people are actually recognizing the truth in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. And uh, uh, many people are recognizing the truth in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. And there's a growing number of people from uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, as I've mentioned before. Uh, they include uh, prominent scholars. Uh, if you go on to YouTube, all you have to do is search Muhammad Qasim, Mimpi. Mimpi is the word for dreams uh, in the Indo-Malay language. And you will find so much content uh, from scholars um, about Muhammad Qasim's dreams and them recognizing the importance of Muhammad Qasim's dreams and um, explaining them in the context of Hadith about the end times. Um, it is also important for me to mention here that uh, as people are coming to understand or know about Muhammad Qasim's dreams, there are also some people who have seen their own dreams and inspirations about Muhammad Qasim. Uh, some of them have just seen in their dreams uh, some voice call out to them, Muhammad Qasim, find him. Or they have seen in their dreams Muhammad Qasim and his image and they have never met Muhammad Qasim before. They're in a different corner of the world and uh, they have somehow come to find Muhammad Qasim. So these are indications that are going out to the Muslim Ummah that live today uh, in different parts of the world for them to find Muhammad Qasim uh, or to uh, find the message uh, to do with Muhammad Qasim. And, um, there are also a lot of other people who have seen more uh, descriptive dreams about Muhammad Qasim and his role uh, in the future for the Muslim Ummah. Uh, while we are discussing this context about how uh, other people are having inspirations about Muhammad Qasim, uh, it is also important for us to reflect on the fact that when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was getting his first revelations and was uh, beginning to spread his message. There are stories of the Sahaba who experienced visions and dreams uh, about the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some of them did not know Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in person, but they were uh, given a divine inspirations uh, to go and find Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, and there are many books that will describe uh, these in details. Unfortunately, we don't have time today to cover them. But I do encourage you to go and find the divine dreams and inspirations of the Sahabas that led them to uh, find Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in conclusion of my speech today, I strongly urge the Muslim Ummah, you in particular, um, and if you have, uh, please convey this message to your family members, to your friends, uh, to your colleagues, to your local Muslim scholars and leaders. And with great respect to the scholars and leaders, I duly ask, please investigate Muhammad Qasim's dreams and understand the dreams. There is great evidence and literature in the Quran and the Hadith. The scholars are aware of it. They understand it. The dreams of Muhammad Qasim have a very important message for the Muslim Ummah and the role that Muhammad Qasim uh, perhaps is going to play in the future is going to be a more important 
personality or a more important role in the future. And we have to understand where these dreams fit. Uh, what we seem to understand from Muhammad Qasim's dreams is that the advent of the Jal, the time of Isa alayhi salam, this will come in our lifetime. Now, is it not important for us to be aware and to be prepared for the events that will happen? I think they are, uh, all the scholars are uh, very much aware of the final major signs of uh, Qiyamah. And uh, for us not to take heed of the message that has been delivered to us, um, this would be a great failure for us. Um, so I strongly urge and encourage you to um, investigate Muhammad Qasim's dreams um, and uh, learn more about them. If you have a doubt, do istikhara. This is a established way that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us or left instructions for us. Um, and I can tell you that there are many people uh, who have now come to believe in Muhammad Qasim's dreams, who have uh, now become to support uh, Muhammad Qasim's dreams, um, that they have done istikhara and they have been convinced through the process of istikhara about Muhammad Qasim and his dreams. Now, uh, I'd like to uh, have a look at some of the questions that may be uh, discussed here. Uh, anyone? It doesn't look like there's anything here. Walaikum Asalaam, Walaikum Asalaams. Yes, I can see a comment here saying beard is not a surety of honesty, but if someone tells the truth, there that is very important. That is very, very true. As I have explained in uh, this uh, live discussion that we've had, that dreams or divine inspirations uh, don't come to people with beard only they have come to people who have been the worst uh, of uh, humans history uh, they've come to namrud and Fir'aun, uh, and we have seen the examples of that uh, in the past so it is uh, purely upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allah to decide where uh, or how Allah is going to deliver the message that Allah wants to. Um, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone who has shared his life. Uh, why is Muhammad Qasim not live? Why haven't you brought him live? Now, Muhammad Qasim, as I've mentioned to you, he's a very shy person. He is... Uh, not comfortable coming in public uh, he's only seen the dreams that he has seen and he has shared them on uh, inshallah we will continue to uh, discuss this with him and perhaps inshallah we will have a uh, question and answer session with him uh, and we are working on that so we will inform you when the time comes from for that inshallah Okay. Muhammad Qasim did not bring new teachings. There is nothing in this dream that is against Islamic Sharia. Yes, that is very, very correct. Like I have mentioned uh, to you, uh, a dream of Muhammad Qasim in 2015. He saw that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told Muhammad Qasim that uh, uh, because Muhammad Qasim is doing the work for uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's Islam, uh, that is the reason why the people who will support Muhammad Qasim, it will be like they have supported Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now it's very important that Muhammad Qasim does not bring uh, a new uh, addition to Islam. This is not Ahmadiyya. 
this is not uh, what people have uh, some somehow found to believe. Uh, this is not a new religion. This is about the true message of Islam, uh, the message of Islam that existed at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It will be very kind if Dr. Zakir Naik, Sheikh Hudais and Jama al Azhar University Sheikh will give their opinion. Yes, we really want to and we hope that they do so after having discussion uh, and reading and understanding Muhammad Qasim's dreams. As you have seen and heard about the importance of dreams in the Quran and Hadith, um, I'm sure that the scholars are very much aware of this. and. Uh, now that Muhammad Qasim's dreams are coming true, uh, it is important for them to understand the message in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. In fact, I encourage you all to go on to the channels of uh, these popular scholars and ulamas, or if you have their contact numbers, contact them and please urge them to find Muhammad Qasim and investigate more about Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Okay, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, left this world and Islam was complete in form of Holy Quran and Hadith. No further person was needed to bring Prophet Muhammad's message further on. Uh, well, my brother, uh, there are Hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when uh, he has mentioned that the uh, the Islam will get weak uh, during or closer to the end times, uh, and this has been commented upon by many ulamas. Um, you only have to go and see uh, what the things that ulamas say. Uh, do they not hold an important place in um, the message of Islam? Uh, and as I've mentioned uh, here earlier that Muhammad Qasim is not bringing any new addition to Islam. This is the message. Uh, uh, the message of his dreams is about implementing true Islam as it existed during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no addition to it, there's no change to it. Okay. Now, I think that concludes everything. Um, I thank everyone who have joined in our live session today. Um, now, next week we are going to give a break and then we'll continue from the following Sunday, which is uh, Sunday the 19th, uh, inshallah. Um, until then, I hope that the message of this video is clear and it helps us all understand Muhammad Qasim's dreams in the context of the Quran and Hadith. Uh, and I wish uh, good health and blessings of Allah upon you and your family. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path and keep us amongst the best of uh, the ummah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, until next time, take care and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.